The Walking Dead made some decisions in its 11 seasons that didn't really benefit the story that much. So today we're going over 10 of the biggest mistakes that The Walking Dead made. So let's start with number 10, Glenn's death. <laughs> It may be surprising that I put Glenn's death at number 10, but it was hardly a mistake at all. Glenn's death was perfectly executed, honestly. It was brutal, it was funny, and it was so dang cool. I knew that people would be upset if I didn't mention his death, but it was actually pretty great. The main problem, and really the only reason why I put him on this list, is because we saw Glenn die in a few episodes earlier, and later we figured he survived only to be killed again by Negan. In season 6, The Walking Dead started making these almost desperate attempts to make you care and a lot of fans, and I do mean a lot of fans, got upset with how they essentially faked Glenn's death. So if anything, number 10 goes to Glenn's fake death. Also season 6 left us on a cliffhanger where they showed one person being killed by Negan but we didn't know who it was. Then there was a few months of basically nothing until we got season 7 episode 1 where it was finally revealed that Glenn and Abraham were killed. During the time between the 6th and 7th season The Walking Dead was constantly debated and people were really hyped. The problem was that when Negan actually slaughtered Glenn The Walking Dead started losing viewership. Now this probably isn't directly connected to Glenn's death or Negan's arrival to the show as many people say, but it was just too much for most people to watch Rick just being so humiliated by Negan. When I watched season 7 for the first time it was brutal to me, Rick was humiliated and people really had a problem with it. So Glenn's dad isn't exactly a mistake and it was a great episode but the circumstances around his dad and his fake dad weren't exactly appreciated. On ninth place is killing Sophia. Now this might come as a total shock to some of you. Sophia isn't really an important character and her dad was essential for the group to find the farm. All of this is true but Sophia could have played a much bigger role in the story. You see in the comics Sophia and Carl have a pretty weird relationship. They're friends from their childhoods and they grow up together and they often have kinda cute and really messed up conversations. Sophia was Carl's best friend basically. In comics Carol dies at the prison and Maggie and Glenn essentially adopt her. It was really cool to see Maggie and Glenn being parents, it was kinda funny. I mean the reason why the group went to the hilltop in the comics wasn't because Maggie was sick but because Glenn was afraid for Sophia's safety and wanted her to be at the hilltop until Alexandria defeated the saviors. And then Negan killed Glenn in front of Sophia. I can't. And Sophia later has a relationship with Carl and they have a child they name Andrea. It's amazing. So Sophia was actually a very important character in the comics and I'm sad we didn't get any of that in the show but it was very cool to see everybody searching for her and when they find her she's a walker it was brutal number eight dale's death dale's death didn't really feel like it was planned to me i really didn't expect it and that's because it wasn't planned at all dale is an essential character in the comics who lives almost until the arrival to alexandria his relationship with andrea was pretty cool and he was actually a very interesting character in the comics in the show Dale kind of seemed like a very important character as well. The episode in which he died was the same one in which he tried to convince everybody not to hang the guy they had tied up. He had arguably the highest moral in the whole group so this makes his death even more tragic and it also makes his message not to lose their humanity very meaningful something that Rick addressed a few times after his death. I don't think that this was a horrible decision especially because I'm a big fan of unexpected deaths but there's definitely a lot of great character development that was lost. Number 7 The Reaper Arc I don't really have much to say about this one besides that it was just so unnecessary. The Walking Dead absolutely loved side stories and stuff like that and I understand that but I just really didn't like it. For people who didn't watch 11th season, Reapers are a group that Daryl, Maggie and a few other guys fought for some time. I like the whole Leia Daryl thing and it was cool. I also like that the Reapers were very capable and they were soldiers before the apocalypse. But they just... Oh my... But it just wasn't that great for me. For the people who don't know what I'm talking about, it's the same as the hospital arc in season 5. Only worse in my opinion. But yeah, that's all I have to say about Reapers. It was great to see Maggie in action again, but it was just so unnecessary and weird. I believe that at this point we already had the whole Commonwealth thing going, so it was just a side mission and it wasn't that great. 
Number 6. Dwight leaving the show. So Dwight didn't really die, he just left because Daryl said that if he sees him again, he'll kill him or something like that. In the comics, Dwight becomes the leader of the saviors, but soon he doesn't want to be the leader anymore. Dwight comes to Rick and tells him that essentially he doesn't want to be the leader of the saviors anymore. Rick tries to give him some motivational words, but Dwight decides that he'll be the boss of Alexandria's army instead. Rick and Dwight don't have exactly a father-son relationship or anything, but Dwight does look up to Rick to some extent. His tactics are really smart and he absolutely destroyed Whispers on all fronts. Basically Dwight could be a very cool character in the show. Dwight is actually one of my favorite characters from the comics. If you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to split the subscribe button in half with the machete. Number 5 is the governor. There's not a specific problem with the governor I have in the show. I know I'm annoying, but I'll again tell you about the comics appearance of the governor. In the comics, the governor literally chopped away Rick's arm. It came from nowhere, he's just that crazy. The governor is a guy who almost feels like he needs to constantly show his dominance. I feel like he has some complexes, he's small and weak so he constantly tries to be a crazy psychopath and he thinks that this makes him tough or something. The governor in the show was great, he really was. I just don't understand why they didn't use the comics version of him. People really love the governor in the comics, he's literally a fan favorite. Number 4. Boomerang Storytelling Boomerang Storytelling is essentially a phrase that kinda became popular in the community and it essentially means that when the characters are split up, for example, instead of showing a few minutes of one character and a few minutes of another character, the Walking Dead decided that they are gonna focus entirely on one character or a group of characters for a whole episode and they'll focus on another group in the next episode and so on. Now if you binge watch the show, you don't really have a big problem with it, but but imagine being a The Walking Dead fan a few years ago when the group was apart for a pretty long time in season 4 and 5 and you watch this week's episode about Rick and Michonne and Carl and you're hyped for the next episode next week and then you get Glenn and Tara for the whole episode and then you wait another week and you get Maggie, Sasha, Bob for the whole episode and then you wait another two weeks before you finally get another episode about Rick, Michonne and Carl. Yeah, this probably wasn't fun to experience. Now it's fine if you make a few episodes in this style, but The Walking Dead initially decided to make this their main storytelling style and I honestly believe that it really hurts the show. Not many people are talking about this, but I generally believe that this was a huge mistake. I mean, it's fun to have a whole episode about Glenn now, but back then it was probably just so annoying. Number 3. Tyrese. I never completely got the character of Tyrese in the show. He's the leader of this smaller group of survivors that eventually joined the main group, I guess, but he was always a side character like Rosita, just worse. He was at first a very interesting character, but besides him freaking out a few times, there's really nothing about his character that would be interesting. We never really had any character that would actually endanger Rick's position as leader. Well, I guess that there were Deanna, Spencer and stuff like that, but I mean, actual tough leaders. Daryl never wanted to be a leader. I guess there's Shane, but the group was on Rick's side all the way. Now Tyrese could be that character that would challenge Rick. In the comics, Tyrese joins the group way earlier and some brutal things happen to him during the prison arc. Rick and Tyrese had this really interesting thing going where it almost felt like Rick controlled half of the group and Tyrese controlled the other half of the group. Or at least this is how I saw it. Rick and Tyrese eventually even got into a fight and it was really cool, so too bad we didn't see any of that in the show. Number 2. Killing off Andrea Andrea in the show was never the same Andrea as she was in the comics, but I still felt that she deserved to live longer. I didn't really see her as one of my favorite characters, but at least we didn't have to get the whole Andrea running around thingy. I understand that she's conflicted and everything, but she couldn't make up her mind and she went from Woodbury to prison, back to Woodbury and again back to prison and then again back to Woodbury where she died. And yeah, her relationship with the governor was interesting and all but it just wasn't that engaging. I guess that the only reason for the governor to be different in the show is really that Andrea would want to sleep with him because in the comics he was kinda ugly but they changed this character for no reason and I get that they wanted to do something different but it just didn't work. 
And number one, obviously Carl's dad. To say that this was a mistake is probably an understatement. It's still kind of a mystery what exactly happened for Chandler to leave the show, but the most popular theory is that AMC didn't want to pay Chandler as an adult as they fired him weeks after his 18th birthday. If this is true, then this is simply ridiculous. In any case, I think we all understand why this was a really bad decision. It doesn't matter if you love or hate Carl, he was Rick's son. The point of Rick's character was to protect his son. Andrew Lincoln also left the show a few episodes after Carl's death and I believe he mentioned that he found it hard to find a new reason for Rick to feel motivated as protecting his family, his real family was his main goal and his family is now gone. The story of The Walking Dead is about Carl. Maybe it's not necessarily about his character but about protecting him, that's the whole point. Anyway, those are the top 10 mistakes The Walking Dead made. I know what you're all thinking. Where the hell is Andrew Lincoln's departure? Well, I decided that I wouldn't include it in this video because this is not AMC's fault. Andrew decided he wanted to spend more time with his family, so he left the show. So AMC had no choice. Of course his departure hurt The Walking Dead, but can we really say that it's a mistake for an actor to leave the show to be more with his family? I know you guys will have your thoughts and your picks for the top 10 mistakes, so write your thoughts in the comments, I read them all. Wait, wait.